I know already answered this, but um, it's how do I hear God's voice? And then how can I tell when God is speaking versus when I'm mentally speaking? Well, All right, I'll I'll go I'll go back to you know the reason why you have pastors, okay, is because there there are there is a time where you probably won't really be able to tell the difference. I'll give you for instance, excuse me. You remember how when um uh Samuel um was being weaned by Eli. And the Lord began to speak to Samuel in his early age. And Samuel thought it was Eli. And Eli had to give Samuel instructions. Listen, the next time you hear that voice, say, here I am, Lord. And the reality is, is that a lot of times the Lord is speaking to us and we really can't decipher the um, his voice only because our relationship with him has not grown to the level where we are sensitive to when he is speaking. Now, some people will will be able to to um, decipher the voice of God at an early age. Like like for myself, when I was a kid, I I heard God's voice, but I didn't know to some degree of the level of that it was God. You know, but I knew that it was greater than me you know it wasn't like my mother came to me and said son you, you you heard a voice you know and that voice came to you it, it was God you know what I'm saying so I had to kind of like develop a relationship with God and when at, even at an early age in my life I began to develop a relationship with God through reading his word through actually just spending time with him and also he'll say certain things to you God will say certain things to you. Like, he'll say something simple. He, it's not going to be nothing. Like, it's just to see if you're going to listen. I, I give you, for instance, um, um, I was uh, I was walking um, down the street one day on my way to work. And um, while I was going to my, uh, walking to my job, I normally would walk around the projects as so, because you know, the projects is kind of dangerous, you know, especially for a brother like me. I'm a church guy, you know, I'm a church boy, I'm, I'm a little square when it comes to the hood, you know. So, <laughs> so you know, you don't want to just be walking, <laughs> you know, because they look at you and be like, Oh, yeah, we got one. But, um, the Lord said to me this day, He said, Walk through the um, the projects, and um. I said, okay, God, because I, I've had a lot of other experiences with knowing that voice who, of God. Um, he trains you to hear his voice. And so I listened to that voice and I walked um, through the projects this day. And just so happened as I'm walking through the projects, the same area where I was getting ready to walk, this guy pulls out a gun about a good foot long. It had to be an Uzi with an, ex with an extension or something because the gun was so big when he shot, I mean, it sounded like it was a cannon. It was like, boom, boom, in the same direction that I was getting ready to walk. Okay? And so God trains you how to hear his voice and he trains you subtly. And that training starts from the word of God, believe it or not. Because once you start reading the word of God, your spirit now is more kingdom minded. It becomes more sensitive to God's voice. It's it's just like um, you have a relative or a person that you know. The more time you spend with them, it doesn't matter where they are. A child knows their parent's voice, and a parent knows their child voice. Okay, the, the, the more you allow Christ to be your parent, let me say that again, the more you allow Christ to be your parent, then the more you're going to be sensitive to when your parent is speaking. Amen. Most people don't, they don't, um, they don't really want to hear anything from God, you know, so 
they they be they become God will be telling them, listen, um, when you get out your car, walk to your left. And they'll be like, Why am I doing that? While they're walking to their right. You get you get that? And they wonder okay. why, you know, they get hit by something that they were supposed to miss. Because God sees the undangers, the, the danger, well, not the undangers, but he sees the, the, the hidden dangers and the snares that the enemy has set up for us. And so he sets these snares up for us to fall into them. But what happens is we as um, human beings as we are, and, and we're very stubborn at times, we don't really listen to that subtle, still voice because we think that God is supposed to come down and be like, for I am the Lord thy God, and I'm speaking to you, and I'm telling you to walk. No, that's not how he speaks. It's a still, subtle voice. And when you hear that voice, your spirit, watch this, your spirit knows that it's your father. Woo! Good Lord. It's nothing. Let me tell you something. It's nothing, it's nothing like when your spirit taps in. That's why worship is important because your worship is when you spend intimate time with him. So when you spend intimate time with somebody, that you become more sensitive to their ways and the way they move and the way they act and the way the way, the, the subtle tones. And there's a there's a voice of of correction that God will also speak in. And, and it'll be like, suddenly, you know, you'll hear it, and he'll be like, you know, you ain't supposed to do that. You know what I'm saying? And you'll know in your spirit, okay, I, I need to back up. The Holy Ghost just put me in check, you know? And so it, it's something that you have to, you have to engage in and, and, and actually be willing to uh, be um, challenged to um, know his voice. Because it's not something that you're just going to know overnight. You understand what I'm saying? You you have to be willing to, to, to engage in that type of relationship with him where you can be sensitive to when he's speaking. Amen. Mm -hmm. The next question is, how can I pray more without distraction? <laughs> How can you pray more without distraction? I guess well, the person gets distracted. I'll I put it to you this way. Even while you're praying, the enemy is going to come and try to get into your mind. I'm talking about right in the middle of you praying, he, he'll bring a suicidal thought. He'll bring a, a thought that, you know, you know, this ain't going to work. God don't hear you. He ain't listening. He brings those thoughts. So there is no praying without distraction. What it is, is you pray until you get in contact with God. Once you get in contact with God, nothing becomes distracting. Whoo, good Lord. I, just, man, I think I need to. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, you don't see nothing else but God. You know, it's like, I remember. When I first started as a pastor, you know, and I made, the, I, t I had this testimony. I told this testimony at the church. I remember when I first became a pastor, I, um, I, I, the Lord separated me from my music and my music is like all the, I mean, it was like every day, all I wanted to do was music All I mean, music was, it, it was, it's my life. It's, that's all I wanted to do. When I woke up in the morning, music when i went to sleep music while i was sleeping i was i'm telling you i was dreaming chords i was dreaming songs i was dreaming arrangements everything was music 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 so the lord took the music away from me so that i could hear his voice because my mind was so focused on the music that I couldn't hear anything else. So what he did, and I felt a little bad in the beginning because I was like, okay, you know, you mean I got to stop my music? He was like saying, only for a season because I got to get your attention. I got to get you to a place where you're converted to where your desires and your focus 
is on me first. Because when you put your focus on me first, I can bless your music. I can, I can, I can take your music to levels that you can't imagine. Okay, he, he could take your he could take your life and your career to levels just like this music that I was I was putting together for two and three four years. He helped me put together albums in a matter of months. Okay, and so the stuff that I was trying to do and to succeed in in my life, God was saying, if you put me first, you'll see that I will bless everything that you're doing in every way. And so I realized once I was able to now focus on God, then God said, okay, now, and he'll send somebody to let you know when it's okay, you know, and he sent somebody my way and they let me know it's all right now for you to, to, to now go and, and, and tap into the gift that I've given you because your desires have changed. As the Bible says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. The problem is, is that most people don't delight themselves in God. What does that mean? To delight yourself in God. That means to, to feel good about reading the word. I mean, be excited about learning more about God. Be excited about um, allowing his word to rechange your thinking. Be excited about allowing... Um, the word of God to be the, 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 your point of reference when you really want direction and, and guidance. You no longer go to your experience and be like, you know, well, you know, I've been doing this for 50 years. You know, I know how to handle this. No, the devil is a liar because you don't understand kingdom. You, you don't understand kingdom moves. Kingdom moves are only designed by God. God will have you do something so silly as to walk across the room and lay something on the table, okay? Just, just to see if you're going to do it. And when you do it, it'll be the very same, it'll be the very thing that will cause a blessing even in your child's life. Okay? It could be something that you, you're in the, in the house and it could be something that God tells you just to move. He says, um, move this pot or move this um, whatever. And you're just moving it based on what the Lord is telling you. But that, that, that specific point of obedience was for the protection of your son or the protection of your daughter. You just don't know. That's why it's important to be in tune with God in the tune with your spirit, your spirit man, the Holy Spirit, because it is those things that is going to, to help you um, be able to, 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 to dodge the dangers and to escape those areas in life where the enemy had set up for you and traps for you to, to destroy you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm a witness, yo. I, I mean, I, I've been, I've been, um, wow, I've been preaching for almost, almost 20 years now, almost 20 years. I would say 2002, so you talk about 18 years, right? And God is still teaching me. He'll tell me to do like simple little things like um, go upstairs. I'm like, well, what am I going upstairs for? Okay, just go upstairs. I go upstairs and there's nothing there. Then I come back down. He says, okay, um, go sit down in the living room. Go sit down in the living room because now I'm listening to the voice, right? Because now I understand the voice. Now, you in another situation, right? That was only practice. Now you're in a situation where he it's a, it's a, it's a do or die dangerous situation, right? And he says, don't turn around. Keep walking straight. 
you're not going to question God. You're going to be like, I know that voice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep walking straight. Right? I give you my experience, okay? I was in the front of my building one day when I was about, I had to be about 18, 19 years old. And um, walking in the front of my, my, my parents' home, the, in the front of the building, and about five or six dudes started walking behind me. And the Holy Spirit said to me, they get ready to jump you. And I said, okay, God, what am I supposed to do? And one of the guys said, yo. I said, I said, God, what am I supposed to do? He said, turn around. I turned around. When I turned around, right, one of the guys within the group, because it was about six, seven, eight dudes that's standing there, one of the guys in the group recognized me. He was like, nah, 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 he good, yo, he good. Right? They, this is a guy that I did not know. But I would always say to him, hi, when I walked out of the building. It was just a hi, because I knew he was up to no good. So when I saw him, I just said, yo, what up, man? And he said, yo, what up, man? We wasn't friends. This one dude saw me, right? So now I'm going to go fast forward to this, this other situation I had. I'm walking through the park. While I'm walking through the park, there's about two, two, almost 10, 20 dudes that are standing in the park. And the park was empty because it started raining. I'm walking past these dudes. I have on my church trench shirt jacket. <laughs> so you know I look like a square, right? So they was like, yeah, we taking you. We taking him, right? I can hear them. But this time the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me, don't turn around. Right? I heard the Holy Spirit and I kept walking. And the guy said, yo, you didn't hear me say stop? And I just kept walking because the Holy Spirit told me to keep walking. It's, it got to be sensitive, right? By the time they decided they was going to come and chase me, I was already far enough from them to run. Hello! I didn't try to come <laughs> around and be super superhero. Try to show all my kung fu moves. No. I started running. Because it was, it was almost 20 of them versus me. But I was able to run because I listened to the voice of God to tell me to keep walking so I could have enough distance between the two. Now, what is the, what is the, what is the moral of the story? Had I not listened to God's voice the day when he told me to turn around and I would have kept walking, they would have jumped me and the guy would have never recognized me. Come on now. You got to know how to hear God's voice and you got to be willing to let him train you. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path. As a matter of fact, there's another scripture said that the steps of a good man, that means a woman too, uh, <laughs> are ordered by the Lord. So I realized when you allow God to order your footsteps, to order your way that you go and how you do what you do, then you get godly results. You get kingdom results. Am I, am I, am I making sense? Because yeah. the reality is, is that most people, they don't want to listen to God. They want to talk. And that, <laughs> it amazes me how some people will come for counseling, right? And they don't want to hear what you got to say. They just want to tell you what, they, what they're dealing with. And you listen to them and you say, okay, now I'm going to give you the remedy to your situation. And they're like, well, you don't understand. Well, then why are you here? <laughs> right? Because that's what people do. Oh, you don't understand. Nobody understands me. No, we understand you. You just don't understand the process of healing. The process of healing begins when you are able to receive the medicine. It doesn't start, right? right? The process of healing, we, we know, starts when you give what your issue is. 
But when you, when it's only when the doctor's able to say, okay, I understand where you at now. Now let me give you the medicine. If you go, wait a minute, before you give me the medicine, I know why you're sick. You're getting ready to die. I'm getting ready to give you the medicine, but you don't want the medicine because you got your own way of trying to heal your own self. And that's the way, that's the reason why you stay sick. And that's the reason why you don't get healed the way you need to get healed. And I'm not talking about bodily heal. But I'm talking about mentally. Mm -hmm. Some of us are mentally messed up because we won't allow the word of God to enter into our lives and enter into our mind so that our thinking can be changed because we're so stuck on what we think. I was stuck. I understand. I was there. I was stuck at a place where I thought that I had all the answers. I thought, yo, know, I thought I was so intelligent that I could think my way out of situations. And God said, oh, yeah, let me see you think your way out of this one. Let me see you think your way out of this one. Because you ain't got enough wisdom to think your way out of this one. Okay? I, watch this. I want to see what you're going to do with that. Right? And a lot of people don't realize that God puts things in our way. He doesn't, God doesn't tempt us. He tests us. Okay? He don't tempt you. He tests you. He puts a test in your way to see, just like he tests Abraham. Abram, he says, here's the son. Let me see if you, or you, you say you love me. Or oh, let me see if you're willing to sacrifice that which I gave you. Isn't that amazing? God gives us gifts. He gives us this ability to be witty. To be smart. To be. He wants to see if you're going to take that wit and you're going to pour it into him. To see if you're going to use it for his glory. Or are you going to use it so that you can get rich? Mm, uh, yeah. Are you going to use it for your own self uh, gratification. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to use it for your own success? But watch what he told Joshua. He told Joshua, if you have courage, right, be of good courage. Do not allow the word, the laws depart from your heart. Don't allow, don't look to the right, don't look to the left. He said, meditate on my word day and night. But what I want you to understand, I want you to be of good courage. What is he telling him? He's not telling him to learn how to fight. Joshua already knew how to fight. He was telling him that the courage that he needs now is to be able to trust God when he can't trace him. Know that God is there when you don't even feel him. When you are in your dry moment, can you trust God? <laughs> yeah. Can you trust him? Because that's what, that's what God wants to know. He wants to know, can we trust him when, 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 when your body is saying yes? <laughs> can you trust him that he can keep you and that 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 in the end you're going to really get the prize that you want if you do it the right way Woo! i just hit a home run i know it i know it when you do it the right way you get the prize that you want but problem is is that a lot of people want these great men in their life they want these great women in their life they want people that they can trust in their life they, they want all that stuff right but they don't want to keep themselves until marriage. They don't want to do that. They want to kind of, have, you know, have treats along the way. The devil is a liar. You can't, know, you can't have a treat before the treasure. <laughs> and you can put that, 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 that's Bible right there. No treats before the treasure because the, the reality, <laughs> It's one way, it's God's way, mm -hmm. no way at all. It's just that simple. Because if you would give treats, guess what? That person becomes trained to your behavior. And if they become trained to you being disobedient to the voice of God, guess what? When the, the moment you go, well, I don't want to do that because God spoke to me. They be like, really? Oh, God speaks to you now? They don't respect <laughs> They don't respect anything concerning God when it comes to you. You could be talking some real, real um, heavy stuff, but they won't respect it because so many times before they put you in positions where you were willing to compromise your place with God. 
So why, why all of a sudden now you don't want to do that? Why all of a sudden? What, what is what is the big deal now? Why 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 all of a sudden you want to be all religious and you, like you got this grand relationship with God? Well, you know what? I have a changed heart. I went to church and I repented and I said, God, please help me with my sins and help me with the stuff that I'm. Listen, you do it God's way, you're going to get godly results. If you do it your way, you're going to get your results. And guess what? Most of the time, your results don't end up this. Well, they normally end up the same way your results ended up before. How about that? <laughs> if you want more of what you've already been getting, then keep doing what you've been doing. Am I correct? If you want something yeah. more from God, you then you got to you got to challenge yourself to stretch your faith, stretch your relationship, and put yourself in in a frame of mind that I don't care how and what goes on. I'm not going to go against the will of God for my life. And when you do that, people respect you. They go, wow, this person is, wow, they're anointed. Wow, I can't, I can't mess with them. I'm, I, I know, I know even if I present myself, I got to get myself right. Because I, I realize that they're serious about their walk with Christ. And, and that's what you want from people. You know, listen, you can't change nobody. You know, these girls out here trying to change men, they can't change that dude. That dude ain't changing. Not by you. <laughs> Only God can change that stubborn mind. I'm trying to tell you. And the same thing go with females. Only God can come and change the way you see yourself. The way you view yourself. That God could come and tell you 199 different things, how sweet you look and how it is. The moment you look in the mirror, you'll be like, oh, I'm ugly. Yeah, well, you keep saying that, then guess what? That's what it is. You speak stuff, or we speak stuff over our lives. That's crazy. So we got to learn that our relationship with God is very important. And so when as you're taking steps, towards getting closer to God, there's always going to be distraction. There's no moment that the devil is going to stop. The Bible says in John 10 and 10, it says, for the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his mission. He don't have no other mission to come to pacify you, to make you think everything going to be all right. No, he's coming to steal. What is he coming to steal? Your joy, your peace, your your um. Your, your, your faith, okay? And then he kills your spirit, right? Once he kills your spirit, this is how he's able to come in now and destroy you by, by now destroying your soul. See, your soul, it, 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 your soul, your spirit, and your, um, your body are three, they have three separate minds, okay? The soul has a mind of its own, the spirit has a mind of its own, and your body has a mind of its own. It, all those three entities have to come together and decide, I want to do the right thing. I'm going to do the right thing. Um, body, you're going to obey the spirit. Because your spirit is driven by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has no power over your flesh. You have the power over your flesh. By allowing the Holy Spirit to become, to, to allow your, your body to become subject to the Holy Spirit. Be, um, uh, I present my body as a living sacrifice, Romans 12 and 1. I present. You have to first say, I'm coming, God. I'm presenting myself as a sacrifice for you to do what you want to do with me. You can't go to God and say, this is... <laughs> I'm presenting myself, but wait a hold on a second, God. But I don't, I don't really like the idea of you, you, you taking that away from me right now. You know, I, I still got other plans to do over here. And God said, all right, well, when you're ready to present your body, and I'm talking about your body, not just, see, a lot of people think that the body is that, that, that Paul is talking about is the flesh. He's talking about this, the mind. When you bring your mind and say, you know what, I present my body, my, my, my whole being as a living sacrifice, holy 
and acceptable unto God. You know, people take the word holy and they think it, it means this, ooh, and you got to be walking down with a robe on and that makes you holy. No, holy is really a, the, a word that, that, that says whole, to, to make you whole, holy, to make you a whole person, to make you a whole being, that you're operating um, and functioning um, and you're living a balanced life. Amen. Amen. <laughs>